Blue's Clues is coming back to Nickelodeon in a new format. Donald Trump didn't actually do much to help out LiAngelo Ball get out of jail in China. And, of course, Toys R Us, the store we all loved as kids, is about to liquidate or maybe about to liquidate its official operations very, very soon. Those stories, very big stories for this past seven days, but not quite large enough to get into the full top ten. So what stories did make it in by your count, of course? We'll talk about that and bring back the not-so-brought-back brackets in a moment from This Is Conversation's weekly wrap-up show for the week ending March the 10th, 2018. And welcome to the show. My name is Jay Cleveland Payne, your host for this show and the things behind the This Is A Conversation website. Of course, hold at thisisaconversation.com. What happens at that website and through that website, you may ask? Well, even if you didn't ask, I'm going to tell you right now. Through the website and our social media sites through Twitter, TH underscore conversation, and This Is A Conversation at Facebook, we have conversations with you out there. We think you are the best people to have the conversations with because you are real people. We get past the headlines and the chirons that get stuck in the newspapers and in the TV shows and talk about stories all over the world from different places, different scenes, and different sorts of weirdness. We put them out there and let you decide which ones should be the ones we talk about in our top ten and the other stories we have behind this. Now, how does that really happen? You follow us on Twitter and Facebook, as we said. We look at the reactions to each different link, every story. And the ones with the most reactions, likes, loves, hates, shares, replies, all those things, get added up into an algorithm inside of a spreadsheet that does magic things that my brain can't do. And we spit out a top 10 list for every single week. And we'll get to that in just a moment. We also have a segment here that we call the bracket segment. We call the brackets interview segment because we took the top 10 stories and fed them to a person in a bracket and had them go through the stories to see which ones they liked the best or which ones were better for them. Then let them talk about the news for the week. We don't have the interviews, at least not set up right now. So for the next few weeks, we're going to try something new. We're not going to give up on the brackets quite yet. But I'll be playing the brackets myself, which means there'll be some slight changes to that. And what's going to turn into is the brackets commentary. I'm going to break down the story that I pick out from eight stories, not ten stories. More explanation, and we'll get to that segment. And then I'll get a bit more commentarial, a bit more political, a bit more inside of what I have going on. So you're going to see some changes to the program coming up in the next coming weeks and on through the year, we assume, to keep things going, keep things fresh. We'll also have things a bit more pithy, we hope, in the top ten listing. So show may not go as long as it was going before. We're backing away from our big radio plans and sticking on the podcast plan. So time is not so much an issue, but we're going to see how things work out for the next couple of weeks and then regroup from there. You can let us know what you think about what's going on with this show by sending me an email to info at jclevenpain.net. Enough of me. Let's get on to the show for this week and the top 10 listing as determined by you following us on social media, Twitter and Facebook. That being the number 10 story starting off with Bachelor Nation is outraged with Ari Lundyke's juniors for dumping Becca's weeks after proposing. That was not the most spectacular read, but you get the point. It was posted on Tuesday, March the 6th. And for those of you who are not Bachelor fans, well, let me give you the skinny. The Bachelor is a very popular television show. Let's go with that right there. It follows one guy and his quest to find the love of his life on television from a group of uh, 25 different beautiful women who all are there for basically being famous and maybe finding a date. So how does The Bachelor really, really work? The show goes through a season where the guy dates to multiple women in various sets and eliminates them as they go along, finally getting to the final person where they actually propose to this person at the end of the show because they're The Bachelor and now they're going to get married. Most of these things don't actually work out. This is one that did not work out and worked out in a romantically, spectacularly bad way. Now, Lewandyke is the man who was a bachelor for the season. Season 22, by the way, for a show that may be eight years old. And he proposed to Becca Kufman at the finale, the final rose ceremony. This happened back in Peru. Weeks later, they thought, being Becca, thinking she was going on a romantic weekend with her new beau, Lewandyke, um, a few weeks later in Los Angeles, found out there was a sit-down discussion where he called off the engagement and said the feelings were not quite there for her. 
he actually wanted to go back with the runner-up, who was Lauren Vernon. This, of course, was taped and played back after the finale or at the end of the finale because these things were taped months ago. Okay. So people were not happy with Mr. Loondyke. Uh, not only were the people involved in the whole matter were not involved like it, but Twitter, of course, basically killed him over the few days. If you liked your Bachelor that way, then apparently you got exactly what you were looking for. Moving on to the nine story this week, not quite as crazy, but still a little crazy. The headline from that story, Amazon admits that Alexa is making terrifying laughing sounds and promises to make it stop. This gets a bump in response from the 10. About 9.24% more people responded to this one over the week. And no, this weren't people laughing at Lou like, um, you know, breaking up with his girlfriend. What it was is your Amazon Alexa device was sitting in the back, in the dark, just not minding his own business, listening for you to say something important for it to do. And that's exactly what happened. We found out early this morning or late yesterday, based on when you saw the posting we had on it, Amazon Alexa devices have a flaw, have a bug. They're computers. They have that. But it was picking up slight sounds and interpreting them as being told Alexa laugh. So some rumbling or something, some scratching of paper, a rumble in your attic, a fan or something going off, had made a smite buzz that Alexa thought it said Alexa laugh. So Alexa would cackle in the middle of the night, in the middle of the dark, the light, whenever it felt like it, or actually whenever it felt like it heard what you thought it was hearing. Alexa is being fixed. Amazon is setting out a bug so that it can no longer be activated by saying Alexa laugh. To make it laugh, if you want it to, you must say something like Alexa, can you laugh? Will you laugh? You must put in a full sentence, not just put the word out. That should hopefully fix it from laughing at you at odd times. Technically, it's still spying on you anyway. Let's move to the number eight story this week. Philadelphia declares no emergency. This one, a bumper response of 3.08% from the nine story. This is a pretty simple story to tell. There was another nor'easter, another bomb cyclone, another big batch of snow hitting the East Coast. And what it really did was make it a mess for a lot of people. Philadelphia called a snow emergency, which essentially meant everyone had to move their cars as close to the curb as possible because plows were moving as much as possible to keep things from getting too crazy. School was obviously closed. Most businesses and most government offices were closed to keep people off the streets. And it was a time to be had by all as the Nor'easter left a lot of cold and extended version of winter for people who were thinking spring actually was showing up sometime soon. Going on to the number seven story this week, FBI paid Best Buy Texas search customers' computers. This is a bumpy response just slightly from the eight, just 0.75%, but this is a really important story. Um, and it goes along with the Siri thing about being uh, spied on even when you don't think you're being spied on. Best Buy Geek Squad gets a lot of flack for not necessarily being good at their job. Back when they were the Geek Squad, you know, 15, 20 years ago, an independent operation, a lot of people were falling in love with people coming in and helping people set up their computers, do troubleshooting, whatever. Best Buy bought out the Geek Squad brand, turned their technicians into the tie wearing guys, and since then they've been, you know, kind of sucked. So the technicians at Best Buys across the nations have been working undercover, if you will, for the FBI to locate illegal data on people's computers. And this has been happening for about 10 years, they're being told. They're paying the technicians eventually a bounty for finding and reporting legal materials. So if you've taken your material to Best Buy, you're taking something to Best Buy, and then you found out you were charged with something weird, like child porn or stolen goods or something like that, maybe those are the guys that ratted you out. Now, they've been doing this for 10 years, as we said, so FBI is now taking some flack for this and Best Buy as well. But in the grand scheme of things, when any sort of technician or any sort of person finds something like that on your computer, they're actually supposed to report this in. So it's not so much that Best Buy is technically snitching on people particularly, uh, but Best Buy is denying allegations that technicians are actually looking for these things and looking for a bounty even though they're getting paid maybe $150 per instance of people being turned in. Let's move on to the next story. This is the sixth story for this week. Sinclair's new media bashing promos rankle local anchors. Bump in response from 11.85%. This is one I didn't know was going to get that much response with because I work in the media. It worked out to my advantage, and it's something that I like to think about because it's what we think about in the media. 
Sinclair Broadcasting is a media company that manages television stations and radio stations in local markets around the nation. Now, full disclosure, I do not work for Sinclair Broadcasting, and I won't be bashing them per se, but I'm going to go into the story that was released on CNN about what some of the anchors in the local markets weren't so happy about with their new promos because they sounded kind of manipulative, kind of pushy, and a lot like some of the things being said pushed by the Trump White House. The new initiative for new local TV stations changing up their their logos, their liners, if you will, because a brand new deal bought was Sinclair bought out some other stations, so they're now in some new markets. That happens when a new company buys out the smaller local companies. They kind of rebrand things, make sure you know they're there. The problem is the copy from the promos read a lot like propaganda, a lot like manipulation, a lot like the things that you would expect from some sort of totalitarian government, kind of like the thing that Donald Trump would kind of love. However, that's not what a lot of local anchors and little business people and a little people working in the markets are are dealing with. In fact, they're saying the promos sound like fake news stories from news culture saying that people out there are bad, but we in Sinclair are good. Does that make a difference to people who listen to it? Well, it sort of does. If you trust someone and they say something to you enough times, you're more than likely to believe it, even if it doesn't sound all that that real, if it sounds false, because you believe them in the grand scheme of things. Sure, they can be wrong sometimes, but in most cases, you'll give them the benefit of the doubt, even if they are. And that's sort of the problem that Sinclair Broadcasting is having, or the local people and TV stations are having, with some of the national ads or the mandated ads from national. As I said, full disclosure, I do not work for Sinclair. That is not my bugaboo. Uh, so this is from the story we pulled from CNN, and we posted this story on Wednesday, the 7th of this week. Actually, by the way, this was the biggest Facebook response uh, story we had this week as well. Not that that had anything to do with its ranking, but it did make it to the top six for this week. Moving on to the number five story this week. This one gets a bump in response of 1.32% from the six. Failed GOP Senate candidate Roy Moore complains that he's broke. Now, Roy Moore, who tried to run for the Senate, he's a former judge in Alabama, just a former state senator, I believe, as well, uh, tried to run for the actual Senate to take over a seat that was vacated by Jeff Sessions, something that the president was kind of okay with. At least he was okay with after he beat the guy he was pushing for in Alabama because that would mean it would stay a Republican seat. The problem, he's accused of being a child molester and for dating young women when he was in his 30s and basically even trolling them all for young women um, and asking their parents for permission, which is also kind of weird. So he ended up losing the candidate, losing the, the, um, the election, the candidacy, because most people realize that, hey, that's kind of creepy, and B, he has a long history of not being the bestest guy towards the people in his long-standing terms in politics. The biggest problem with politics is it follows you along, so your reputation is what it is, and it stays with you forever, even if your reputation is good or bad. Eventually, the bad reputation that he ran with finally ran away from him, and now, because of all the money he has spent on his campaign, plus the money he's spending on legal bills, he's broke He's basically asking people for money and assistance. If you want to help out Roy Moore, you can go follow what you want to ever to do and help him out. But the 71-year-old Republicans had a lengthy statement basically saying that because of all the problems he had to deal with that kept him from winning the election and the people fighting against that, he is now out of money. Okay, we are moving on now to the four story this week. And this one gets a bump response from the five of 65.36%. So, yes, the top stories are getting really serious, y'all. This one headline, Girl with No Job, Claudia Osri Show, Canceled by Verizon's Oath. So apologies for the very, very poor reading of the headline. But Instagram star, Girl with No Job, had a show coming to Verizon's Oath channel, Verizon's Oath streaming service, whatever. She had a show because she's Instagram famous. It's called The Morning Breath, or it was going to be called that, a talk show hosted by Claudia Oshery, uh, because Instagram stuff is cool. Her sister Jackie was also going to be on that thing. Verizon's Oath has canceled it because they found several anti-Muslim social posts from the sisters deep, 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 deep into their postings. Here's a spoiler alert for anybody who's trying to make it big, internet famous by being internet famous. 
erase all of the bad stuff before you start posting the good stuff and may, hope that nobody finds the bad stuff because the Internet is forever. Uh, this is something that uh, may you find more of a problem as more people who seem to have no talent pop up from the ranks of the YouTubes and the Instagrams because a lot of people actually get found uh, doing that thing and working on that craft while they're doing whatever. Issa Rae is one famous person, and, of course, we know about the Paul brothers who are basically ignorance. Uh, let's move on to the next story for this week. This is the number three this week. It gets a bumper response of 5.14 from the four. It is the headline, or is the beginning headline, Two Injured in Huffman High School Shooting, 17-Year-Old Birmingham Girl Dead. This is the original headline we posted. The headline from the story that we have that was updated, pulling it from the Alabama.com website. Huffman High School Shooting, Cortland Arlington Killed, Birmingham Police Question injured teen. Now, the big story from this was a school shooting, or a shooting that was called an accidental shooting in this high school in Alabama, Huffman High School, to be exact, East Birmingham School, on Wednesday. The girl killed, We, as we already said, and our hearts and prayers go out to her family. Her name was Cortland Arlington. There were a few other people treated for injuries at the scene, but nothing got totally violent or out of hand in this situation. Police said at least two shots were fired but they're still trying to sort out the timeline of events and what happened to the gunfire. Gun used in the shooting was recovered from inside the school, and the acting Birmingham police chief, Orlando Wilson, said they believe the shooting may have been accidental. Somebody had the gun for some odd reason and just sort of went off. There hasn't been a real update to that story, to that timeline. Um, they'll figure this out pretty soon. This one is not going to be another big part of like shooting, but it is a disturbing trend that continues here in the nation and in our schools. Let's move to the number two story for this week. The headline, MASH star David Ogden Sears dead at 75. This just gets a jump in response of 96.62%, almost 100% from the number three story this week. So this was a really, really big deal on many fronts. And if you're not old enough to remember MASH, you probably know the face. He is the star who's most famous for his role in the MASH, Major Charles Winchester, which most people from mash or famous from that role from those roles but of course he joined the cast in 77 uh, after the show was already rolling he played an aristocrat and a talented surgeon who uh, of course left the void after frank burns characters uh, left so he took it over he actually got two emmy nominations for himself taking over a role from one manager that left now He's played plenty of, of faces in many different shows beyond there. Plus, he's the voice of many characters. You may remember him or hearing him as Cogsworth in Beauty and the Beast or Jumba in Lilo and Stitch. He died after a long battle with bladder cancer at age of 75, of course. He died peacefully at his home in Newport, Oregon. Thoughts and prayers out to the family uh, of his and, of course, everyone around him who've loved him and all the work that he has done over his career. And finally, the number one story this week, two dead gunmen at large in Central Michigan University shooting. This is the largest Twitter response this week, and this one gets a jump response from the from the two story of 12.24%. From the 10 story this week, which was, of course, The Bachelor and the dumping on TV, 393%. And from our almost irrelevant story, which isn't all that irrelevant, we'll talk about that much later, but that was story one, number 109 this week. A response of 14,575%. Let's get to the story. It's a very, very heavy one, so we'll dig into it as deeply as we can. The updated headline on the USA Today website where we got the story from the original link. Suspect in Central Michigan University death used gun register to dad. Now, this is a very, very disturbing story, so bear with me. Central Michigan University student was accused of shooting and killing his parents in the dorm. This happened last Friday and used a gun that was owned by his father. Essentially, James Eric Davis Jr. was a 19-year-old. He still is a 19-year-old sophomore. He was arrested on Saturday, and he was arrested pretty close to campus, only a few miles away, after his parents came to pick him up from campus, and he shot them in his dorm room. That's the basic of the story, and that's basically where it goes. It's still kind of being evaluated on how things were done, but what made it really sad and tragic is that his father, Eric, James Eric Davis Sr., uh, was a police officer uh, back at home. It's weird, it's 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 strange, and it kind of goes to along the lines of the greater discussion we have on guns and mental health. 
We don't want to get in too much into that this week, but there is obviously some sort of issue, some sort of disconnect in this. This is a very sad story, and when we heard about it coming down on Friday, rolling into Saturday when he was captured, just literally a few miles away from the campus, uh, there was a lot going on. We did get the initial points that there was a shooting on campus and, and it was involved. The people that were killed were not students. They were the parents of a student coming to pick up a student from uh, his time in school. And that makes up the top 10 stories for this week. Thank you so much for being a part of this big shebang here. And you can be a part of next week's. And if you've not a part of this week's, you can be a part of next week's as well. It's very simple. Follow us on social media. On Twitter, our handle is TH underscore conversation. On Facebook, it's This is a Conversation. And when you see us with us posting in your timeline, like it, love it, hate it, share it, reply to it, reply to me, or follow the postings as they are mirrored on the website, This is a Conversation.com. There's not a lot of response to the articles there, but you do get put into the tally for the algorithm. And at the end of the week, we will give you the top 10 from there and give you some extra ones as we go down the line. Now, coming up, we're going to go to our second segment as normal and play the brackets sort of as normal, but give you a bit more of me. I give you commentary based on the story I pick from the top eight in the brackets in just a moment here on This is the Conversation's weekly wrap-up show for the week ending March the 10th, 2018. The conversation that is the website for This is a Conversation exists to get deeper in the conversation with you guys about the stories that really impact what's going on. The bigger stories and sometimes the smaller stories that get washed out when one story becomes the headline that lasts for sometimes a week. The conversation survey panel also exists to get deeper into conversation with you. And we're helping you get in contact with people who need to know this information. These are corporations. These are city governments. These are sometimes just private citizens looking for information for things they want to do. And they want to talk to real people with real opinions, living real lives to see how things should go. So to help us facilitate these activities, we need you in a special survey panel, the conversation survey panel. Go to thisisaconversation.com slash survey panel and fill out a quick form. It's going to get quick information for your demographics, an email address so that we can contact you with surveys. And when we contact you with surveys that say this survey pays a certain amount of money, as soon as you fill it out, you are in line to get paid for that survey as soon as we conclude it for the duration of what's going on. These are paid surveys and some non-paid surveys looking for information for corporations, for city governments, and sometimes private citizens looking to get some information from the public. You are the public, and so fill out the form, and we will do our best to get you paid for real opinions. And that's how we do that with the Conversation Survey Panel. Once again, you can sign up for it by going to thisisaconversation.com slash survey panel. Thisisaconversation.com slash survey panel. We need your opinion. We need your help. So we need you in the Conversation Survey Panel so you can help us get the information to people who need you. The actual existence of the conversation, this website, this podcast, everything came through from surveys back in the day, around six years ago when the concept of doing this website came about. It was a time when Facebook was doing a lot of the really silly surveys, or I should say other outside companies were doing a lot of the really silly surveys that would let you figure out who was your favorite Disney princess, what kind of poo character were you, uh, what is your favorite soap, whatever, different things that people would put in all sorts of random information and it would come out with some outcome. From there, I thought, what if I made a website that asked a question and got people's actual information or got people's actual insight into a question, conversations, if you will, and that was the launching of the conversation. From there, the idea of doing the conversation survey panel came about when I was doing a needed a research problem project for my MBA program, and I thought, hey, I'm in these surveys things where I have to take all these pre-survey surveys to find out I'm not qualified for a dollar and spend 10 minutes just being unqualified. What if I made a survey panel that allowed people to get in and get their surveys in? I also worked at the, at the moment 
on a morning show that did a morning poll, morning survey every day that had data to work with. And so I merged the two together for the project and turned it into a bigger thing that was a paying project uh, with the conversation survey panel. From the survey panel and from the surveys and from the thoughts uh, came the thought that, hey, I can actually do a daily at the time uh, talk show on the news by going through and asking you people for the top topics that turned into a daily and a weekly top 10. And that turned into what is now the conversation wrap up show with that. I wanted to grow the show a little bit more, grow the show a little bit Make it a little more dynamic, if you will. So I wanted to bring in live interviews, just as you would have on a live show or a show that's on night, such as The Daily Show or some of the shows that are on Netflix now, and you bring in a guest to talk to. But I needed a reason to bring the guest in. I needed some sort of in and some sort of quirky thing to make it work. Hence came forth the Brackets interview. The Brackets interview are just the top ten stories given to the guest without knowing any semblance of what order they are or what stories they may be, and they will whittle them down to a story they want to talk about. We're going to still do that. We're not going to have guests for a while. Guests turned into a very, very tedious thing to do in the scheduling of my life. My life is very extremely overbooked with all the things that are just going on right now. So for the time being, we're going to keep on the bracketing, if you will, and I will work with, that's how I'm going to find out what we're going to talk about. We're going to have this be my commentary section where I will give quick commentary, hopefully quick commentary on one of the stories in the top eight, because the making it an odd first around bracket made no sense. And we actually re-recorded this about three times to figure out how it's going to work. So we're going to do it the short way this time. I went through the top eight stories and it came down to the five and the seven story for this week. That being the story with the headline of failed GOP Senate candidate Roy Moore complains that he's broke versus the FBI paid Best Buy text to search computer customers or customers computers. Those were the top two stories. We went with Roy Moore. So right now I'll give you a few minutes on my commentary on Roy Moore saying that he's broke. Now, failed GOP candidate Roy Moore is complaining that he has no money. Why does he have no money? He's got a lot of bills. We all have lots of bills, so we understand Roy Moore. We know how that goes. He's got legal bills because he's in some fights with some people he says he doesn't know who says, oh, not only do they know him, but he tried to uh, have um, relations, if you will, with them when they were underage and he was in his 30s. That was when his rising to power as a young district attorney back in the day in Alabama. Of course, he became a judge and he kept on doing what he was doing. And he's actually the reason why we're having these debates over Ten Commandments on state capitals, because he's the one that started this thing. He actually has lost his judgeship job twice for not complying with things they were told to do. And the fact that he was running for Senate to take over a a seat for him uh, that was held by Jeff Sessions when he went on to be the attorney general and only got the nod for the president and only got the backing for the president after the guy, the president, really wanted to win, didn't win the primary because Alabamians know who they want to back. They want to back a guy they know, Roy Moore. Roy Moore, who, of course, to people who are slightly extra militant, and that's just me euphemism for saying that people that are not white, have issues with Roy Moore in the state of Alabama and the things that he has done and can probably would continue to do if he still had his jobs. So Roy Moore being broke is essentially karma finally coming to a person who deserves to get a smack in the face of all the just down low, dirty things that he's done, not including the seemingly extensive chasing of underage girls being a 29 to 32 year old guy meeting up with folks. In fact, I believe he met he had the statement about meeting his his wife when she was a teenager and he was in his middle 20s at some sort of dance recital. And then after she, of course, became of age. They started going out together. Weirdness on that stage. Now, it's it's one thing to say the times, oh, they have a change because, yes, I do understand that it was a whole different time that back way back when, but not back when Roy Moore was in his 30s chasing 17 year olds in high schools and signing their yearbooks. That's a bit extreme. It's one thing to say people got married younger it's another thing to say older dudes married younger women on a regular uh, a regular standpoint because it didn't quite happen quite that way. 
The fact that Roy Moore has no money because he's fighting all these legal battles because there's all these women who are claiming 20 years later, 30 years later, 40 years later, that way back in the day he was kind of creepy. And, of course, Roy Moore, a man of God who says he he doesn't know these women and is not apologizing for any past uh, transgression, has a problem. Something must be done. Something must be paid for the transgressions that were done. And now it looks like Roy Moore is paying his due. So whether you're backing Roy Moore or not, and why you backed him or not, is not important. This is a culmination of a lot of karma, for lack of a better term. A lot of things that were put into place long down the line that are finally coming to light at this point in time. And the alarm's going off, and obviously, no pun intended, Roy Moore does not have the cash in hand to pay. So the actions that you do in the past may at some point in time come to light and come back to haunt you. So the best way to keep those things from happening, if you're young, is to heed this. Yes, you do things in the foolishness of youth that you sort of grow out of and hope never come back. But sometimes you have the notion, sometimes you have the will with all to know what's going down is not the right way to go. So you got to be brave enough when you're young to not be stupid. And when you're older and you've got young and stupid things in the past, you need to atone for them as quickly as possible. And if they come out, you know, doing the dirty thing and trying to call the other people liars is not the right way to go. Why don't you go with the truth at this point in time? I cannot see into Roy Moore's heart. I cannot see into his soul. I do not know the man and have no desire to actually know the man. But from the accounts that I've seen and from the testimony that I had a chance to look at, everything that's being said sounds pretty plausible to me. So if it's not, I need some sort of proof. I need some sort of reproof, if you will. I need a man to kind of say exactly what's going on, why it's not happening, and let us move on. Or pay the dues and let us move on. So there is my first batch of commentary for the week. I think it was a little rough. I'm sure you think it's a little rough. But let me know what you think about the way it came down. Send me an email at info at jclevenpain.net to get in on the information here. And in coming up in just a minute, we will get into the wrap-up phase of what's going on. That will be the almost relevant story, the rest of the top 15, and we'll see if we're going to go for time this week. Here for the weekly wrap-up show for the week ending March the 10th, 2018. My wife and I are going back and forth on updating our mattress. The last mattress we bought was through a sale that we heard on a radio commercial on a special bed that was going to be magical because I woke up at 2 in the morning to get to the radio station to work on things very early for the early morning show. She wanted a bed that would let her sleep in and not feel any movement. She bought this bed hearing an advertisement made it sound like it was magical. It was not quite as magical and, well, it was pretty expensive. And now it's it's dead. We need to replace the mattress. We're going with Bear Mattress. Bear Mattress is a brand new sponsor to this conversation. And we're going with Bear Mattress not because they're necessarily magical. They're just a good mattress, and the price range is awesome for us. And they're going to send it to our house, give us 100 days to sleep on it. And if we don't like it, we get to send it back and either live with the unmagic magic mattress we already have or get a new mattress, keep on looking, keep on shopping, I guess. But the price is great. The deals are great. They're offering up two different types of mattresses. That's all they have, two different mattresses. One, a memory foam gel, and one, a hybrid with springs and memory foam gel. And the prices cannot be beaten. If you think the other guys are talking about mattresses on the radio have the right mattress, check out Bear Mattress. They're going to mail it to you just like they will. They'll give you 100 days to sleep on it just like they will. They'll take it back if you don't like it just like they will. And... The prices are as comparable, if not better, plus the winter sales going on for Bear Mattress right now. Check it out. Get an extra chunk of money off either mattress, any size you need. They'll take care of it, 
and they'll take care of you. It's Bear Mattress. Get the deal by going to our website, thisisaconversation.com slash Bear Mattress. That's thisisaconversation.com slash Bear Mattress. Get an extra special deal for dealing with them by going through us. They're Bear Mattress. They want to be your way to a night's great sleep. Once again, we're not doing interviews at the moment, so no need to thank anyone in particular for showing up today, except for you folks out there in conversation land. You folks out there listening to the podcast, doing what you can to share it with friends, enemies, and random strangers, so we have more people in for more greater, better conversations. Not necessarily grammatically correct, but it is pretty awesome to know that we're all out there having these chats together. And you can be a part of the top 10 list or the full list of wherever things show up by just simply following us on social media and reacting to the posts as they come by. As you see headline, like it, love it. Hate it, if you will. Share it, laugh at it, reply, uh, do what you can to it. And the more engagements that you get to it, the Twitter already and the Facebook already counts how many times things get interacted with. Uh, those go into a tally, and we let you know which one's got the most interaction at the end of the week. Now, I want to remind you that the main website is this is a conversation.com where you can go there for plenty of great features as well as find out what are going on out there inside of the. Uh, the listings. We have a mirror of the Twitter feed that goes through the website. So all day long, those things get posted as well. Plus, you can sign up to get email alerts for what goes down on the conversation by going to the website. And there's plenty of other great features, including playing the rankings game, where you can take the top 10 and put them in the order that you think it should be in. Plus, you get a chance to join the conversation survey panel as well. Uh, You can get a chance to have your opinion count towards great things and get paid for it. And we also ask you to stop by the sponsors page, sponsors buttons. There's buttons, there's links, there's all sorts of things. Click on a button to check out a sponsor. Help us keep things going here at This Is The Conversation's main headquarters. I guess they want to call it that. And, of course, check out this week's sponsor, this week's main sponsor. We're highlighting Bear Mattress for the cool things they do. They sell good mattresses. Check them out at thisisaconversation.com slash bear mattress. We have a little extra time than I thought. We're going to go ahead, and I know everything's going flying by night, but we're going to keep the format as is and hit the uh, the 46 minutes of actual airtime inside of the content to mix up with um, going on the broadcast. We'll review how, how we'll do that later on. But we're going to go into right now. The Almost Irrelevant Story of the Week. This one is story number 109, 109 specific different headlines for the week. This one headline read as, Mississippi lawmakers pass nation's most restrictive abortion law. Uh, Now, this is one that came through late last night as we posted it. It happened yesterday in the real time on Friday, March the 9th, the day it was posted this morning, essentially, from yesterday's activity. Uh, It's been a pretty big deal, but with all the other big deals going on in real time, it kind of got lost in the wash. Let me get you the details of what happened in this story or what happened in Mississippi. Lawmakers there passed a bill that's banning abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy, uh, and the governor is probably going to sign it. The Mississippi House on Thursday approved the measure 75 to 34. The Senate passed it uh, 35 to 14 to head for out floor for debate. The bill itself, which if signed into law, would be the nation's most restrictive abortion law, changing the state's current law prohibiting abortions after 20 weeks of pregnancy to 15. It includes exceptions for the human's life or for major bodily functions is threatened or the fetus has a health problem that would mean it wouldn't likely survive outside the womb. It doesn't include exemptions for cases of rape or incest. Uh, This is what we're getting from the um, AP who are studying the or reporting on it for the nation that we're getting from the wire services. So Mississippi is coming down with the most restrictive bill to um, work against abortions in the nation dropping abortions past 15 weeks, making that a no-go. The governor's probably going to sign it, and we'll see how that rolls with that. Rounding out the rest of the 15 for this week, we start off with the number 11 story. Blue's Clues is coming back to Nickelodeon very, very soon, and it's coming back with a fresh look, some fresh animation, some cool-looking graphics, and you'll get a chance to see Blue and however Blue will materialize uh, from here on out, and we'll see exactly how that works out in the upcoming weeks. 
Coming in at 12 this week, Donald Trump was in China while LiAngelo Ball and his buddies at UCLA were shoplifting sunglasses. And Donald Trump says he helped the kids get out of jail and go back to the States and wanted LeVar Ball to acknowledge it. LeVar Ball said he ain't do nothing for my kids. And apparently Donald Trump ain't do nothing for his kids. Seems like that the kids had already had things worked out well before Donald Trump even said anything. In fact, the uh, the the arrest, the house arrest in the hotel was essentially the, their punishment and them waiting time to come back. They were essentially coming back anyway. Everything was already in motion. Donald Trump happened to say something before they got home. And so he took some credit where credit wasn't exactly due. The mayor of Nashville, uh, Megan Barry, resigned this week in the wake of an affair and a bit of an extra scandal where the money that was spent, some money was stolen from the coffers of the city to pay for things around the affair. The affair was with a former bodyguard, one of, the, one of her police escorts, and it turned into a thing where she didn't necessarily admit any guilt, but she is stepping down as the boss for the mayor of Nashville. College football player found dead in this apartment. This story we posted uh, early Saturday, March the 3rd, and here are some of the details from that story, a bit gruesome, so bear with us on this one. A defensive end from Rice University was found uh, dead in his apartment named Blaine Paget. Uh, he was found, the cause of death was not determined as of Saturday morning. There's an update to the story where we have, but he was a junior for the school. He expected to be a key contributor next season, and the team, of course, you know, all the uh, the statements that they could at the time. Uh, we'll see if they do update the story and a cause of death, but nothing posted here in the story that we pulled from in the original headline. And going now to the next story of the week, which is the 15th story. Toys R Us may liquidate U.S. operations. This is a very sad tale for kids of the 80s like myself who could, you know, wish we got a chance at Toys R Us because our parents, you know, they Walmart even wasn't really that, that large at the time. It was still a Kmart world. And it was all about the toys at the department stores that were normal, not going to the big Toys R Us store. That was a massive thing. Toys R Us being hit very, very hard by the new economy. Essentially, kids can buy their things on their iPads and send them straight to them, or they're not really buying so much toys. Actually, toys are really being bought by adults and being kept in boxes. That's a whole other issue for collector's items. Uh, but the toy industry of being bought up and used up and being replaced is not what it used to be. And Toys R Us, one of the largest retailers left in all toys, not so much left in all toys. You know they're filing for bankruptcy. It looks like they're going to liquidate completely. And if you have a Toys R Us near you, there might be some real estate coming to you or at a good, at a good price very, very soon. So you can check that out as well. Coming up on about three minutes left in time. So we're going to go through as many of the also's just as we have time for. I'll read the headline and come through and see what's going up. The Stormy Daniels thing is a big thing. Donald Trump is being sued by Stormy Daniels saying that the hush agreement that he, she was paid for is invalid because he never signed. Technically, it had a false name on it, and that false name was never signed. But that's what she's going for. She's trying to sue Trump so she can spill the beans. We'll see how that works out. President Trump signed a proclamation that instituted a 25% tariff on steel, 10%, 10 tariff on aluminum. The exemptions go to Mexico and Canada. When he first said there would be no exemptions, everybody's cheating us, then he went to swap it out for Canada and Mexico. It's because they are currently renegotiating NAFTA and want to get favorable in that. The big issue is the person or the persons that this would really target that would actually make a difference, the Chinese and the folks there in South Asia that may actually be cheating us up with cheaper cheating us out with cheaper goods, they don't pay the much in the tariffs. This is gonna hurt a lot of Europeans and of course the Mexicans and the Canadians if they can't figure it out. We'll see how that actually plays out coming up. Jordan Peele becomes the first African American to win best original screenplay, of course, for the movie Get Out, the movie that originally wasn't seen in a lot of the headlines and a lot of the ballots for some places because it couldn't quite figure out whether it was a comedy, whether it was a horror film, whether it was a documentary, but it won pretty big at the Oscars last weekend. Booth Bades banished as car makers opt for less flesh in Geneva, which is actually a headline that is uh, misleading because there are still plenty, apparently plenty of booth babes going through the Geneva car show right now. They're just not quite as prevalent. These are the nice looking ladies that stand around and essentially do Vanna White things around cars to get your attention because guys like pretty girls. If you can't figure that one out, then 
The Orphan Black story will continue, continue with a new comic book that goes through the further adventures of Cosima and Delphine as they go through and they vaccinate the other clones. And you'll see that in a limited series a comic book coming up very, very, very soon. And West Virginia actually ended its strike after eight days. Uh, now all the kids are back in school. The teachers got a about a 5% raise. Uh, they were complaining about getting a 3% raise that was, you know, nice, but wasn't comparable to neighboring states and was not going to offset the cost of the rising health care. So the people of West Virginia got together and they made a 5% raise across the board for all state employees. West Virginia wanted to make sure that it wasn't a state where different unions were fighting against each other. So the legislature did the right thing. Now the question is, where does the money come from? That's a very good question. And now we are completely out of time for this week. So thank you for being here one more week. And thank you so much for listening to the full show and sticking with the changes. Because trust me, the changes, they are coming. The only thing constant in this life is change. And we're going to find a way through this so we get even better. Guaranteed. Follow us on Twitter at TH underscore conversation. Follow us on Facebook at This Is Conversation. And our main website, This Is Conversation.com. I'm Jay Cleveland Payne. Find me online at jclevelandpayne.net. Thank you so much for being a part of the conversation and join us next week for more top 10, almost irrelevant and what we have in between conversations with you from this is conversation.com.